Neil, congratulations. You must be very, very satisfied with that performance this afternoon. Yeah, I think, um, you know, they'd beaten a lot of teams above them on the way here and they were doing well in their league. So you never quite know what to expect. I think they came and tried to have a go, play two up. Um, but um, I thought we were very professional. Was it the mentality that impressed you the most today? Yeah, we, you know, we just said to the boys at the start, you know, whatever happens, whether it takes all 90 minutes to score a goal, um, you got. I don't know what to expect, whether they'll come and press us or not, but we've got to be, the tempo's got to be right because eventually we thought that the energy and the fitness would tell. Um, you were always, I think, well worth that one goal lead when it finally did come after 32 minutes, but given the nature of it all today, did you feel a little bit for their goalkeeper in, in, in the grand scheme of things? Well, I think, to be honest with you, he'd, at one point, I thought it's not going to be one of these games where the goalie has an absolute worldie because he'd made so many good saves up until then. So it was unfortunate for him that the first one went through. But like you say, well deserved. And you know, it, it, even at one 0 and two 0 you still think that's just if they get one, they can get their tails up. So I'm glad we we carried on, put the foot to the pedal, so to speak. Yeah, Jim O'Brien didn't seem to mind at all in his celebrations. Tom Crawford um, played really well today, got man of the match as well. Can you talk a little bit about his performance? No, excellent. Um, you know, he's fitter, stronger. Than he, than he was. He's got more, um, I don't know what the word is, um, he's, he's learnt more without the ball, you know, that he, he can't be a free spirit in there and he's doing a lot, lot more of the nitty gritty stuff. Um, so that's why I played him with Doyley, because Doyley don't let anyone get away with anything. So, um, you know, it just, it's just worked out well and we've managed to give a breather to one or two as well. You mentioned Michael Doyle there, 800 career games. Today was his 800th. For people that haven't played the game professionally, that seems like a big number. For somebody who has played the game professionally, I imagine you think about your legs and your ankles and your knees even more so. Well, you know, I think I played f about 450 and, you know, it took a lot to get through them 450. It is, it's an inspiration and, you know, to be honest with you, he looks after himself so well. If there's anyone that can get through three games in a week, you know, he's the guy, he, he takes care of his body, he knows what he needs. Um, but he doesn't stop running around. He's got the lung capacity of God knows what. He, he doesn't stop running. But, you know, he is. I'm glad I've got to work with him at some point during his career because he's an inspirational man. Um, Scott Wilson comes off the bench, gets a goal with virtually his, his first touch. How important is it for a, a striker to get off the mark so early as he did? Yeah, I think so. And right game, obviously. That we, that's why we was pushing to try and get the deal done by yesterday morning so that we could uh, put him in the squad and, and use him today. Um, and I think the goal showed what he's about. You know, he's just got that, that pace. He likes to get in behind people. And, and as soon as he got in, I fancied him because all the footage we'd watched, then 1v1s he gets in on, he's normally... Pretty lethal. Uh, Kyle Wooten got a goal as well. He also got a rest. Came off on the on the hour mark. Doyle got a rest. Rawlinson got a rest. That's the real spine of the the team there. Um, I guess that probably pleased you as much as anything that you were able to just give them a rest ahead of Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, if you could have given me the perfect scenario today, it was that the game was. Uh, manageable, we got through it, we got no injuries and we, we could tinker with the team even during the game to make sure that going into you know what's going to be a, a heavy schedule now that, that we kept the right players um, a little bit you know fresher than, than they might have been. So, full steam ahead, filed, third time's a charm? <laughs> third time lucky. Um, <laughs> it is what it is, we get on with it, we're professional and like I say, we tried to keep the week free because we wanted to have a free week for the Barrow game and prepare. Um, but we'll, we'll just, you know, we'd, we'll have to do it in different ways and we'll prepare for Firewood first. And that's the first most important game. And then obviously we'll take on the best team in the league after. I'm guessing you got through today without adding any extra injuries and knocks to the physio and all that sort of stuff. He's probably busy enough as it is. But do you think you'll be able to get any extra bodies back before Tuesday? Um, Tuesday might be a bit soon. I think Saturday's probably the aim for maybe one or two. So, you know, Alex, we just can't seem to get quite over the line with, with him. Damien McCrory's back on grass and doing near enough everything now. So the, the plan for him was that he was going to try and come back into training on Tuesday with the squad with a view that he'd get three days prior to Barrow and could be in contention. Obviously, now we've got the game Tuesday, we'll, we'll work out a different plan. Filed and back, Barrow and back. Presumably, you are going up and back. You're not going to stay up there before Barrow because the finances won't allow it. No, and I don't think it's the right thing. I think the players would get bored. I think it's too long. You know, you just do your journey. We've got loads of different strategies on the coach that we do to try and speed up the recovery process and sleep's important. So we'll, we'll work out a schedule and try and get to both games in tip-top condition. And it doesn't stop after that. We go Tuesday again, then Saturday again. So we're looking forward to it. We've already had a chat about it. And the boys, we've said, look, you know, we're going to need everyone now to stick together and let's, let's be excited by the challenge. And just finally, other than an extra 
two midweek games. Um, what does the, the semi-finals of this competition mean to you? Uh, now we're here, it's so like I've mentioned before, you know, at first you kind of, you, you get through the early rounds and now we're where we are, we, we want to win it. And um, let's see who we draw, it's quite exciting, it's exciting for the fans and hopefully we can go into that last four weeks of the season, you know, still in with a chance of, of the playoffs and still in with a chance of, of winning this and that would be just reward for the fans for the, for the tough season they've had. Congratulations Neil, thanks for your time. Thank you. Are the players starting to talk about Wembley at all? Um, I don't think they're starting to talk about it. I think they're excited by the thought we could get there. Um, I think if you gave them a choice, we'd rather get there in the playoff final. Um, but that's you know that means that we're we're one game away from promotion. So if we can get there twice, that'll be great. But but you know as we've always said, the league's our priority, and this is a, a bonus and something that we're we're really looking forward to as well. How pleased are you to have five different scores on the team sheet? What do you think it'll do for their confidence? Um, great, and, and I just thought the goals were really good. If you go back through the goals, some of the passing and moving in the build up to them, you know, was was really good, and the finish was good. And like we say, we could have had several more prior to that. So, really pleased um, with the professionalism and the energy and the tempo we played at. Um, in terms of Scott Wilson, you brought him into the club. Just tell us a little bit about that move and how that came about. Well, obviously, we've we've brought two young lads in who both did really, really well today. Um, but we just wanted, when we looked, we thought if we're going to bring somebody in, we didn't want somebody who was just brought in as an extra number. We wanted to try and bring somebody in who could, you know, effectively push any one of the other three out of the team. Um, and Scott's got a pedigree and a goal-scoring record that, that we liked. Um, he's he's played at the level. He's played at the level above, and we just thought, you know, he's he's very similar to Wes. He's got that yard of pace, likes to get in behind, and um, we just thought he'll bring loads to us. So if he starts like that, and then hopefully it drives Christian on and, and Wes on and Kyle on, and everyone does better because they know their place isn't secure. I just got to ask you about injuries, Alex Lacey. What is the problem with him at the moment? This is hip flexor. Um, we just can't, you know, we can do most things, but we can't go over that line. You know, longer passes still catches a bit. We can't quite go over the line. We've had it scanned, we've had it looked at. There's, you know, there's no damage in there that, that's, you know, a risk. But obviously, Alex has got to feel like he can get out of first gear and um, and do what he needs to do. And we're not quite there yet, so we're all a little bit frustrated, including Alex. Um, and we've tried various different techniques of a few days rest and then you know trying to push it and nothing's quite working at the moment but but we'll get there um, in terms of others, Regan, Ben Turner, people like that? Um, well, Ben Turner will be back on grass next week, so he's a little bit ahead of schedule. Regan's back running, but obviously needs almost a full pre-season. Um, and Damien McCrory, we, we had a plan for him to train Tuesday, but but obviously we've got a game now, so um, hopefully we'll work something out where Damien gets all the work he needs, comes back into the fold Thursday, and with a bit of luck and a following win, might be in contention to be in and around it on, on Saturday if that's not too soon. So we've got a... You know, we'll have a chat with the fitness guys and the, and the medical team. We've got to make sure that, that there's no injury risk from getting them back. But but we're getting there and, and we're going to need them because when we become Saturday, Tuesday, like we, we're going to be now for the rest of the season almost, um, these players are going to be invaluable to us. Uh, just a word on Avely. I mean, just a credit to the credit to themselves, really, aren't they, to get this far? Yeah, and beating teams above them. And today, I didn't know what to expect. I really thought, you know, we might be up against it today. And I know that sounds strange given the gap in the leagues, but they came, they were brave, they played a front two. Uh, big man, little man, ones that quick scored 25 goals, and we thought, blimey, they're not coming to sit back in and just play one up. Um, they went for it, but I thought right from early on we caused them problems and that's why we do the patterns of play and training and the movement so that we can try and solve the scenarios and thought we did it really well. Uh, Joel Bagan came in today a uh, left back for his debut. How do you think he got on? Because he did show flashes of why Cardiff rate him so highly. Yeah, I thought so. Um, I thought it was the ideal game to bring him in at. You know, I didn't think Hartlepool away was the best game for him. I thought this was a good one. It gives him a taste of it um, in front of our crowd. Um, and like I say, hopefully it will stand him in good stead, get his fitness levels up, and now he can he can he can help us out in this running. Now, are you getting excited for Wembley? Um, no, no, I'm excited for uh, <laughs> filed away <laughs> round three, um, one game at a time. Don't look look over there, and it'll all go wrong in between. So, so just next game, and we've got so many games in between now and the semis. We'll worry about the semis when they come. 
I'm interested to know how you keep everybody's focus at, at this time. When uh, inevitably everyone's going to be talking, oh, two just two games away from Wembley, but it, uh, you've also got the league campaign at the same time. I think if you if you spoke to us all, the league's the most important thing. You know, we, we don't want to. It's no good getting a Wembley in this trophy and finishing 12th or 13th. That's not what we want. We've got to try and hang on in there, you know, and plough through this schedule and keep digging in and picking up points and staying in there because, you know, by the end of the day we could be God knows where 12th and and you haven't to climb back into it again and, and uh, it's all very well having games in hand you've got, to, you've got to win them and pick up points so focus on that the lads know that's our number one and they know that's what we want to achieve and the cup's a, a real bonus for everyone How challenging is this running going to be in terms of physical demands fitness etc Yeah absolutely and you know I know people always wonder what goes in on in a manager's mind with team selections but um, you know you're going to have to trust me that players not any player can play all these games and there's going to be times like no 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 there's going to be times when you know Carl Wilton can't play or Wes Thomas can't play or Michael Doyle can't play or Connell can't play and people will wonder why you've left them out they're not machines and if we keep flogging them they'll break down and we have to make sure we get the balance right at the right game so it'll take a lot of planning um, and you never know who's going to get injured in what games so you'll have to adapt to that as well but, but at least we'll have a plan going into them uh, just on, on the word on failed, how disappointed were you to be going there again on the Tuesday? Because as a manager, I imagine you wanted the three week to go into such a big game at Barrow. Yeah, that was the aim. Um, it was a number of reasons. Number one, we, we felt that the, the weather forecast for this weekend was that horrendous um, with another storm coming in that we didn't want to go up there a third time. And we didn't want to have all the both times we've gone. It's, it's it was 50-50 the whole way up there. So we felt we don't want to go into a game like that. So that was the main reason we we thought the pitch will be better at the end of March when when mm. our availability. So that was why we wanted that. Um, and after obviously the travelling we've done, they they've they've pushed us and the league have pushed us to play it. And you know we it's not our ideal choice, but but we've got to get on with it. And and hopefully we'll make all them journeys worthwhile when we. You know, if we can come back with something, I suppose the, the best thing is, from your point of view, Wes Thomas actually will be back for the Barra game now. I suppose if no, that's Wes, one blessing. No, Wes is actually back for the final oh, okay. game. Okay. So, so Wes is this was his third game of his suspension. So, um, so the you know the plus side of it, I suppose, is Wes missed um, one of the cup ties rather than the league game. So, so Wes will be back in contention for the final game.